good. As long as they don't see my love handles. Is that fine? Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. Turned off my ringer. Okay. Here I'm Every digital business operates on a. Oh, All right. Okay, guys, I'm live, huh? You guys are there? I don't know if Protestant believers here. Yeah, it does take time for me to be out of find myself. Protestant believer or arbiter. He usually posts verses for me, but if he's not here, then we have to make do. Yeah, so I'm going to start that new series, right? Start the new series on on what topic? Now, this is a topic I can get excited about. So, Sa El Nom, you mean the other topics you're not excited about? Satan in the Hebrew Bible, the origin of Satan, right? Pray for me. I'm away from home. Home for now, Chicago. Please pray in Jesus' name that if the Lord Jesus is pleased, it'll open the door for me to relocate. I want to leave. Hopefully by October, in the almighty name of Jesus, he sets me free, start a new chapter in my life. For now, I'm planning to head out to Arizona if God is pleased. So pray for that, please. Please, Father, please, Lord Jesus, please, Holy Spirit, and that <clears throat> he'll open doors of blessing and show, shut the doors of opposition, right? And I've been here and haven't been able to work out, so pray that I can get in the gym. I'm still far away from my goal. I'd like to lose 50 more pounds and keep it off by the grace of God, get my health back. And more importantly, that the Lord Jesus will help me to get holy. So pray, folks, I can eat right, exercise, and be disciplined, right? It's hard when you're away because you got to find a gym near you. Not only that, but, man, it's hot here in California. The particular area of California, very hot. So it's like resembles Arizona weather. Oh, you mean Joe's witnesses? I don't know. So we're still waiting for a few more faces to show up. But as we're waiting, pray for me, right? That the Spirit will fill me. The Spirit will loosen my tongue to speak clearly. Star God. Here we go again. Maybe you got to shut down maybe your computer or something because it's buffering. or losing connection. All right. As if there's too many people on the internet, right? See, we lost the, the buffering. Because yeah, there's too many. No, not even. This is, is that, top. Then what's up with you? This bro? is 100 gigabytes. Watch my God. I paid top. All right. So I don't know. Okay, then it's not even. Then it's just this uh, computer. It's not working. Okay. You guys okay now? Let me see. Is Protestant believer here? Orbiter, is he here yet or no? What's up? First and last, good to see you. Surviving, Jesus is the only Savior. Please, Lord, Lord fix the stream in Jesus' name. And by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, pray that he energizes us, especially me, and just fill us, fill our hearts, our souls, our minds, our mouths, our bodies with the Holy Spirit, the glorious Holy Spirit of the living God. Yeah, hold on. Today is going to be more exegetical, educational. We're going to focus on <clears throat> breaking down specific chapters of the Holy Bible to demonstrate beyond any reasonable doubt, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is not a creature, but he's the uncreated, eternal Son, Word of the Father, who is Jehovah Almighty that became flesh, so that in this one divine person, the Lord Jesus Christ, we find two natures. So he's not the created Archangel Michael, right? Michelle Dengler, how are you? Why is that name familiar, Michelle Dangler? Eli, how are you, brother? Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. All right. What's up? First and last, you here? It should be a good time, right? It's 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, meaning 7 p.m. in Canada and New York. That's a good time, right? All right. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Someone had brought that to my attention. Yeah, I guess first and last is gone. Someone brought that to my attention that the Seventh-day Adventists also believe that Jesus Christ, our Lord, is the archangel Michael. I'm aware of that 
but let me qualify that. Let me explain the difference. Even though there's a growing movement among the Adventists today, there's a growing movement among the Adventists today to go back to what they claim are the roots of their movement, which starts in the 19th century, 1800s, the Millerites, right? The Adventists. They claim that the original Adventists, and by the way, do hit the like button so we can make this YouTube page explode by the grace of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, for the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, this movement claims that the original Adventists were Arians. They believe like the heretic Arius of the 4th century, in that they believe that Jesus Christ is not eternal, he's not uncreated, but he was, quote-unquote, born of the Father before creation. In other words, Jesus was brought into being at a later point in time, but before all creation. So they're not Trinitarians. However, you have seven-day Adventists, and you have seven-day seven Adventist ministers like Pastor Douglas Batchelor, quite famous. He's a Jewish convert to the seven-day Adventist movement, and he's a diehard Trinitarian. He believes in the Trinity. He believes the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are three eternal divine persons. Three eternal divine persons. Yep, Doug Batchelor of Amazing Facts. Exactly. Guys, I hope I'm not boring you, right? I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to fill me and fill you for the glory of Jesus. And we're going to begin in a minute. All right? Okay, so now, they they are Trinitarians, Doug ba Batchelor and his branch of Adventism, Seventh-day Adventists, they are Trinitarians. They believe Jesus is eternal. He is uncreated. He's just as old as the Father and the Spirit, and together they exist as one God. Are you with me so far? You with me so far what these particular Seventh-day Adventists believe? Because I'm trying my best to accurately represent their position. Now, they do believe that one of the offices, one of the names of Jesus Christ is Michael, that he is the Archangel Michael. Now, follow with me. Follow with me. Th these particular Adventists, the Seventh-day Adventists, and ministers like Pastor Douglas Batchelor believe that Jesus is the Archangel Michael, but they do not believe Michael is a creature. They believe that Jesus Christ is an eternal divine person, right? He's an eternal divine person. So he's not a creature. He's God Almighty, one with the Father and the Spirit. But one of the offices, one of the roles, one of the positions that Jesus assumes is that of the Archangel Michael. So for them, Michael is not a creature. You understand the difference? You understand the difference? This group... Although believing Jesus is the Archangel Michael, do not believe Jesus is a creature. He's the second person of the triune Godhead. So they're Trinitarians. And you'll even find some people throughout history who are Trinitarians, who were Trinitarians, who worship the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit, that also believe that. For example, one of the greatest Bible expositions, which you can find online, okay, John Gill. His commentary is available for free in its entirety online. John Gill was one of the most knowledgeable Bible expositors who really knew the Jewish sources and the Jewish background of the Old Testament. So you can Google and do John Gill's exposition of the Bible. He believed that Michael was one of the names of Jesus, and yet he was a Trinitarian. You with me there? Yes, they believe Michael is God because Michael is simply a name of Jesus, and Jesus is not a creature. He's God Almighty. Right? But it's not just Adventists. John Gill wasn't a Seventh-day Adventist. With me there? You understand the difference between these individuals who are Trinitarians, who don't believe Jesus is a creature, but believe he's God Almighty, Jehovah in the flesh, and yet still believe that he is the Archangel Michael because for them, Michael's not a creature. Michael's the name of the second person of the Godhead. And by the way, someone noticed a sign behind me. It looks like it says hell, but it's actually hello. Let me see. Yeah, it's hello. So don't be scared if the O is missing, right? Because by the power of the Holy Blood of Jesus, by the fire of the Holy Spirit sanctifying us for the glory of Jesus, we have escaped the wrath of hell because we're covered by the blood of Jesus, right? 
Okay, so is that clear? So is that clear that there are two camps, two groups of quote unquote Christians, one who are Christians and that they affirm the Trinity, that Jesus is God Almighty, and another group that are heretics, false Christians. And these two camps believe that Michael is the name of Jesus Christ, but <clears throat> they draw a different conclusion from that belief. The camp that affirms the Trinity, that Jesus is God Almighty, the second person of the Trinity, do not believe Michael is a creature, but the name of the second person of the Godhead. The other camp, like the Joe's Witnesses, they are heretics, they're false Christians, and believe that Jesus is Michael, and believe that Michael is a creature. Is that clear? So I'm going to be refuting that view that says that Jesus is a created spirit being, an angelic spirit creature, the archangel Michael, in that they believe that Michael is a spirit creature. So that's what I'm refuting. I'm refuting the belief that Jesus is this creature called the archangel Michael, <clears throat> that Michael is a spirit creature, an exalted spirit creature, but he's not God Almighty, and that Michael happens to be Jesus, so that this position teaches Jesus is a created <clears throat> angelic being an angelic spirit creature called Michael. That's what I'm going to refute by the grace of the trying God, by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus, right? Well, Leslie, even though I don't believe Jesus is the archangel Michael, if there is a Trinitarian, let me, let me repeat this. If there is a Trinitarian who worships Jesus as God Almighty in the flesh and doesn't believe that Jesus is a spirit creature, but still thinks that Jesus is the archangel Michael, then that is still an acceptable position because that person is not denying the Trinity. I disagree with that person. I don't think Michael is a name of Jesus Christ. But if he says Michael is one of the names of Jesus and Jesus is not a creature, he's God Almighty who became flesh, then that's acceptable. It's not damnable heresy. Is that clear? I just want to make sure what you know, what so that you know what my position is. Well, there is a sense in which even Trinitarians who don't believe that Jesus is the Archangel Michael affirm that Jesus assumed the role, assumed the role of an angel. So he's not an angel by nature, but he's an angel by function. Because let me explain this. Okay, guys, I'm going to need your attention by the power of the Holy Spirit because I'm here to serve you. And people wonder why I engage the comment section. Let me repeat it again. I said it yesterday. The whole purpose for the comment section is so that I can make sure through my interaction with you guys that my points are clear by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not confusing you. This is why I don't shut down the comment section because this will tell me whether I'm confusing you or by the grace of God's Spirit, enlightening you to understand these issues for the glory of Jesus. So that's why I want the comment section because that way I can ask, are you getting it? So if you're not, I can clarify because the job of a teacher is to help you understand the Bible by the power of the Holy Spirit to fall more in love with the true God, especially Jesus Christ, who's God in the flesh, right? So let's begin in prayer so that I can go into the meat of the matter, right? So we can glorify the triumph God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. May you be glorified. May you be praised. May you be exalted. And Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you first purify us in the blood of Jesus. Forgive us for our shortcomings, imperfections, for intentional and unintentional sins. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, mortify our flesh. Give us the power to crucify the flesh and walk in the life of the Spirit. And Father, bless us. Grant us illumination from your Spirit. Anoint my mouth to speak truth without error. Grant me clarity, clarity of thought and speech, Father. And please save me from stammering. Save me from confusion. Save me from error. And enable me to recall the scriptures and exegete them perfectly and correctly by the power of your spirit for the glory of Jesus. And bless everyone present, Father, to understand the things of scripture by the power of your spirit filling us. We need your spirit, Father. Seal us by your spirit. Clothe us with your spirit. And clothe our loved ones with your spirit. In my case, my daughters. And cover us with the blood of Jesus. Save us from attacks of the enemy, Father, from distractions. And use me, your unprofitable servant, to glorify Christ in the hearts of your servants, Father.
and fill my lungs and my chest and my throat with the life from your spirit and make the sound of my voice pleasing to their to their ears for your glory father we love you we love you lord jesus we love you holy spirit have have your way with us please loosen my tongue in jesus name yahovah father son spirit all right now let me explain something as i begin the series let me explain something there is evidence that Jesus Christ appeared in the Hebrew Bible as the angel of Yahovah, the Lord, the angel Jehovah, the angel of God. But here's where I'm going to need to explain terms, okay? And this is an ancient belief of the early church. This was the belief of the early church. And there's evidence from the New Testament supporting that Jesus Christ is this figure known as the angel of Yahovah, the angel of God in the Hebrew Bible, who's not a creature, not a creature. He's not a spirit creature. He's not a human creature. Distinct from God, sent by God, but is identified as God, claims to be God, does things that only God can do, and is worshipped as God. So let's define some terms, shall we? And by the way, subscribe to my YouTube channel and then search my YouTube channel. I did several talks on Jesus Christ being the angel of God in the Old Testament. So I have at least two videos, if I recall. Jesus Christ in his pre-human existence appearing in the Hebrew Bible as the angel of God. So listen to those talks, right? But now let me explain the word angel. Well, Lewis, you got to like the word angel because it's used in the Hebrew Bible. And, oh, here we go again. Acts 17, hey, bro, Acts 17 apologetics. I know your hater would. This is now the third time you've showed up to distract me, bro. If you want me to come live on your channel, because your channel is just the bomb, you got over 300,000 subscribers, and every time you do a live stream, you get 1,000. Here, I barely got over 100. I don't mind joining you. Let me know. I'm available, brother, from a different mother, but stop hating. Send some of your subscribers to me and, and you advertise my channel, bro. I'm a broke apologist. Pretty soon, I'm going to be living out of my car. Hater would. Hater, man. Anyway. But all kidding aside, aren't you thankful, all, all kidding aside, aren't you thankful for living at a time because of technology, because of so, social media pages and the internet, God has raised up such giants of the faith, spiritual giants of the faith, bold warriors of Christ like David Wood. I know now his head is going to blow up. Anthony Rogers, Vocab Malone, John Meem, Adam Coleman. I mean, aren't you thankful that you live at such such a fascinating time as Jesus' second coming draws close? God is now raising up warriors at such an amazing rate and using the Internet and social media to reach millions for, for the glory of Christ as a witness before Jesus returns. Isn't it amazing? Right? Isn't it amazing? So thank the triumph God, praise the triumph God for these people that he's raised up. Pray for us that God will cover us by the blood of Jesus and fill us with the spirit so that we do not fall away. We don't shame the name of Jesus Christ, right? We don't blaspheme him <clears throat> and scandalize the faith that God will keep us perfectly pure and holy by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Jesus, right? Thank the Lord for the time we live in, right? And I also thank you guys for putting up with me. I was listening to me yesterday, listening to me. And man, honestly, I cannot stand my voice. But as long as you can stand it, glory to God. Now, with that said, let me define the term angel. You ready now? Are you ready to go into the meat of the matter? As Hater Wood watches the live stream and criticizes me. Don't hate, participate. The term angel in Hebrew is malach. In Greek, it's angelos. The term malach in Hebrew and the term angelos in Greek simply means messenger. Simply means messenger. That's all it means. So when you think of angel, okay, when you think of angel, this guy, <laughs> you're thinking a spirit creature with wings, okay? You're thinking spirit creature with wings. Now, what I want you to do is think biblically. Let the Holy Spirit transform your mind to think God's thoughts after him. The word angel does not necessarily, necessarily refer to a spirit creature with wings. The term simply means messenger. The context will determine whether it's a spirit being who's being sent as God's messenger 
or a human being whom God sends to be his messenger. Now, in the Bible, there is one particular messenger who comes from heaven, who often appears in human form as a man, who's not a creature, but God Almighty, distinct from God. And that's the one we call Malach Yahovah in Hebrew. I'm not trying to impress you with Hebrew. Malach Elohim, Malach Il, the messenger of Jehovah, the messenger of God. And that messenger becomes Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the New Testament. That messenger becomes Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the New Testament, right? That messenger in the Old Testament is not a creature. He's distinct from God. He's God Almighty who can do only what God does. He's worshipped as God, claims to be God, and even God honors him as God. And the New Testament says that messenger became the historical Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. Is that clear? Is that clear? If it's clear, we can begin unpacking the biblical evidence, refuting the belief of Jehovah's Witnesses and other Aryan heretics and cultists like Gregory Stafford. And I'm going to give him some free publicity. Gregory Stafford defected from the Jehovah's Witnesses and started his own cult movement. He's become, for all intents and purposes, a cult leader. And I have to say, I used to have a lot of respect for him. But now that I'm getting to watch his videos, you can clearly see he is demonized. The demonization is very strong. It seems with each passing year, he becomes more demonized <clears throat> as he opposes the true God with each passing video and article. His YouTube channel is called Christian Witnesses of Jah, C.W. Jah. And the reason why I'm giving him free publicity, because I want you to go and listen to his seven-part series, whether Jesus is the Archangel Michael, because I'm going to seek to refute his arguments, demonstrate that like other cultists before him, he is nothing more than a Bible perverter who twists the Bible to his shame and destruction, but glory to the triune God, the true God raises up his soldiers to silence the blasphemies and lies of these Bible perverters. All glory to the child God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Okay? So I'm going to be refuting them. Their claim that the archangel Michael is a spirit creature who becomes Jesus of Nazareth. So that Jesus is this spirit creature called the archangel Michael. I'm going to refute their belief that Jesus is a spirit creature, the first spirit creature that God produced, and that in his preeminent existence, He's known as the Archangel Michael, Christian Witnesses of Jah. His YouTube channel is C-W-J-A-H, C-W Jah. No, and Andy, Shannon, uh, I don't, I'm not saying you should, but I'm letting you know the context in which I'm producing these series to expose these charlatans, these Bible perverters, these agents of Satan <clears throat> for the glory of the triune God, right? I've even challenged them to a debate. So let him know I have a standing challenge. I'll come up to his neck of the woods at my own expense, and I'm challenging, challenging him to debate me. Is Jesus the Archangel Michael? Let's see if he will take that debate, if he's so confident of his lies and blasphemies, right? Now, with that said, let me explain another thing that's unique to these cultists, particularly the Joe's Witnesses and Greg Stafford and his cult movement called Christian Witnesses of John. Here's where I need your ears. I need, it's a J-A-H, not J-A-A. -A. Here's where I need your ears. Beautiful. I'll look good there. Thanks. Here's where I need your ears and undivided attention. Here's another thing that these cultists and Joe's Witnesses believe. Although they believe that Jesus in his pre-human existence was the Archangel Michael. Now, here's where it's going to get really confusing. I need to unpack their belief, lay the foundation, so I can begin the refutation, okay? Begin the refutation. So let me know if you're following with me. Let me know if I'm boring you. If I'm boring you, put a two. If you're following with me and it's educating you, now sometimes some of these sessions are not going to be exciting, but they will be educational by the power of the Holy Spirit because I want to educate you, not entertain you. Exactly, Pierce Taylor. I want to help you understand the scriptures by the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of Christ, 
not entertain you. If you want entertainment, you got Netflix, you got your local movie theater, and you got David Wood. David Wood is all about entertainment. It's not about education. It's about entertainment, just making people laugh because there's nothing educational about his YouTube channel. But with that said, anyway, coming back to the issue. Although they believe that Jesus in his preeminent existence was the archangel Michael, here's where it gets really confusing and baffling. Really confusing and baffling. When Jehovah God produced the human Jesus in the blessed womb of his blessed mother while she was a virgin, the archangel Michael ceased to exist. Listen, listen with me, guys. The archangel Michael ceased to exist. And in his place, <clears throat> Jehovah produced the human Jesus. So their belief is Jesus came into being and the archangel Michael ceased to exist. The human Jesus was just a human being. He wasn't an angelic human. But the human Jesus was given the life force and the memories of the archangel Michael, but the archangel Michael ceased to exist. This is what they believe. Are you with me there? You understand what they believe? Did you, I want to make sure I'm not confusing you because it can get confusing what they believe. So when the human Jesus came into being, the archangel Michael ceased to be, ceased to exist. What happened was his life force and the memories of Michael were implanted in the human Jesus, but the human Jesus was just a man, no more, no less. But then it gets even worse and more confusing. When the human Jesus died, he ceased to be, and then Jehovah recreated the archangel Michael with the memories of the human Jesus, but the human Jesus no longer exists. That's what Joe's witnesses believe. And for all intents and purposes, that's what this heretic Greg Stafford believes. Right? Do you understand what they believe? Yep. What the freak, Andrew Martin? <laughs> Andrew, were you able to listen to the entire session yesterday? Okay. Yeah, well, let me explain what they believe. The Archangel Michael ceased to exist when Jehovah produced the human Jesus in the blessed womb of his mother Mary. But he implanted the human Jesus with the life force and the memories of the Archangel Michael. But when Jesus died, the human Jesus ceased to exist. And the Archangel Michael was recreated, was brought back into being again with the memories of the human Jesus. They don't believe the human Jesus is alive. Okay. That's what Joe's witnesses believe, and for all intents and purposes, that's what this heretic, this cult leader, Greg Stafford, believes, because I haven't heard him teach to the contrary. Okay, so did you get what they believe? So you know what I'm refuting. I'm laying the groundwork for my refutation. Juan Flores, you got to ask them what their source is. You're asking the wrong guy. I'm just telling you what they believe. It's not biblical. It's a perversion of Scripture. Perversion of scripture. Okay? So if you understand, put a one. If you're confused, put a two. Anyone confused? Because I'm now going to proceed to refute their belief that Jesus is, in his preeminent existence, was the created spirit creature called the Archangel Michael. And now the human Jesus ceases to exist. And now the Archangel Michael has been recreated with the memories of the human Jesus. No, Zena. There's nothing in the, their own Bible, their perverted Bible translation, that even teaches that. That's an assertion and assumption. An assertion and assumption, right? So even their perverted Bible translation doesn't support this. But I just want to make sure you get it because I know this is a lot. That's why I'm going slow. I have to go slow so you understand because now I'm going to refute this assertion, this lie. And I'm going to do over half a dozen videos on this, if not more, if the Lord Jesus wills. Because I'm going to really systematically decimate 
this blasphemy. Right? Is that clear? Now, let's begin the refutation. Number one, let's begin the refutation and thank our brother, Protestant believer. He'll be posting verses. Since they believe, let's begin now. In Jesus' name, as the Holy Spirit gives me unction, let's begin. Since they believe that Jesus in his pre existence is the archangel Michael, a spirit creature, they are now facing a dilemma. Let me explain the dilemma, and we're going to go real slow, folks. So if, you're, if you don't like slow and methodical, then I'm going to lose you. But if you don't mind slow and methodical because you want to learn the meat of Scripture, you're not vegans, you want meat, then you're going to be blessed. According to the Bible, spirit creatures called angels were created to dwell in heaven. Just like human beings and animals were created to dwell on earth. Now, you got to get this point. You got to get this point. You really got to get this point. <clears throat> the only being, the only being that's spaceless, timeless, <clears throat> is God. God and only God doesn't exist in time, space, or place. Because God created time, space, and place. That means he by nature is spaceless. Timeless, immaterial. He doesn't occupy space, place, or time. Now, after creating time, space, and place, God can then enter time, space, and place and manifest himself visibly in time, space, and place. But before the creation of time, space, and place, there is God existing eternally, timelessly, shapelessly. Right? That's the inference that you draw from the Bible's teaching that God created the heavens and the earth and everything in them. If he created the heavens and the earth, that means he exists before the heavens and the earth. Well, before the heavens and the earth, what do you have? Well, you don't have creation. You don't have space. You don't have place. You don't have time. All you have is God. Now, since angels are beings that occupy time and space and place. Angels cannot exist before there was space and place. Are you with me there? Angels are creatures who are bound to space, place, and time. Therefore, angels cannot exist before space, place, or time, which is why the Bible says the heavens were created and then the angels were created to live in the heavens, right? Thank you, Kumar. Are you following my logic? Heavens came first, then the angels were created to dwell in heaven. Everyone with me there? I just want you to make sure, and I have articles on this. I'll post the links to my articles in the description <clears throat> section before, well, after I finish. I can't do it now. Now, why is that important? Michael, being a spirit creature, must have been created after the heavens were created. He cannot exist before the heavens because before the heavens, you don't have time, space, or place. But Michael, being a creature, is a creature bound to time, space, and place. So he has to have a dwelling place. Now let's show that scripturally. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Follow with me. We're going to go in-depth in these series. If you like me and not so much entertainment, we're going to go in-depth. Now, read this. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. Did you catch it? God created the heavens and the earth and all their hosts. Heavens and the earth and their hosts means everything that exists in heaven and earth. Let's read it again. Genesis 2, verse 1. Genesis 2, verse 1. Bill Thompson, you're going to see that the Bible says angels came after the heavens because you cannot create the host of heaven before you create heaven. So Bill Thompson, follow the logic here. Genesis 2 verse 1. We're going to look at it again. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. You can't have the host of heaven existing before heaven because this is the host that exists in heaven. You with me there? Okay, now the book of Nehemiah, 
Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6. I hope this is going to be a blessing, challenging, convicting. And I hope by the time I'm done with the series, you will fall more passionately in love with the triune God, with Jesus, and stand more in awe of him. Here, Nehemiah 9.6, read with me. Nehemiah 9.6. Thou, talking about Jehovah, even thou art Jehovah alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts. Did you catch it again? You made all the heavens and all their hosts. The earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, you preserve them all, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. Did you catch it? Just like the seas were created before the sea animals. Seas were created and then the animals that dwell in it. The earth was created and those that dwell on it. The heavens were created and then those that live in heaven. Do you see the sequence here? Earth came first and those that dwell on it later. The seas came first and those that live in the seas. The heavens and those that live in the heavens. So you catch how it works? And then the last part says, the host of heaven worships you. The host of heaven worships you. Well, who or what are the host of heaven? 1 Kings 22, 19. Thank you, Shirley. 1 Kings 22, 19. Is that okay? I'm not buffering, right? 1 Kings 22, 19. Watch here. And he said, Hear thus, therefore, the word of Yahovah, I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand, on his left. Did you catch it? One more time, post it. Who are the host of heaven? The spirit creatures that live in heaven. Let's read it one more time. And he said, hear thou therefore the word of Yahovah. I saw Yahovah sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand, on his left. Now, would this include the Archangel Michael as part of that host? Would the Archangel Michael and Gabriel be part of the host standing in attention before Jehovah? So are you seeing the biblical basis for the point that the heavens are created first and then their host? The host of heaven could not exist before heaven because they have to have a dwelling place. You can't have the host of heaven existing before time, space, and place. The host of heaven need a place to dwell in. You want me there? Is that clear? Now let me give you further proof that the host of heaven means the angels that Jehovah created. Psalm 103, 20 to 21. Psalm 103, 20 to 21. We're going to get there, Mary John, T. Psalm 103, 20 to 21. Yep, Andrew, but not for long. You're going to be a Trinitarian worshiping Jesus. You watch and see, friend. Read with me. Psalm 103, 20 to 21. Bless Yehovah, the Lord, Jehovah, ye his angels. So notice it's angels, right, that excel in his strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word, Bless ye, Yehovah, all ye his hosts. Did you catch it? The angels are his hosts, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. So the angels are the hosts, the hosts are the angels. You see it? Psalm 148, verses 1 and 2. Is this Bible amazing or what? Do you see the depth, the beauty, the power of this book? Psalm 148, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 148, verses 1 and 2. It is. It's living because it's the, the word of the living God. Here, let's read Psalm 148, verses 1 and 2. Praise ye, Yahovah. Praise ye, Yahweh from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Bam. Did you catch it? The angels are the hosts. The hosts are the angels that are to worship Yahovah, Jehovah. So I've made my case, right? Heavens were created first, then their host. You can't have the host of heaven existing before heaven 
because spirit creatures need a place to dwell in. Do you see it? I just want to make sure you're getting it. Yep. Okay. Now, here's the problem for Joe's witnesses and the cults like Greg Stafford. Joe's witnesses and Greg Stafford admit Jehovah created the heavens through Jesus and Jesus's pre-human existence. They will tell you Jehovah created through Jesus in his pre-human existence the heavens. That means they are acknowledging Jesus in his pre-human existence was there before the heavens were made. Ouch. Now let's see why that's a problem. Let's go to Colossians 1, 15 to 16. Now watch the hell this puts them in. The dilemma this puts them puts them in exposing their doctrine as of Satan, as from Satan. Colossians 1, 16 to 17. Watch here. Now watch how bad it gets for them. That's why Greg Stafford will not debate me because he knows I will decimate him by the triune God. Colossians 1, 15 and 16. Let's read. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created. So by Jesus, all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now, here's where I'm confused. If Jesus is the one that the Father created the heavens and the earth, he created them by him. And if Jesus is the one that the Father used to create everything in heaven, that means Jesus existed before the heavens and Jesus existed before anything in heaven were created because God used him to create it. But wait, if Jesus is a spirit creature called Michael, how could the spirit creature exist before the heavens when, by definition, to be a creature means you're bound to space and place. So where was Jesus dwelling before space and place? Where was this spirit creature called Michael dwelling in before his dwelling place was made? I want it to sink in. The newer translation reads the same way with the exception that they inserted the word other. But that's still beside the point, Zena. They will admit to you. Don't believe me? Ask them. Say, do you believe that Jehovah created the heavens through Jesus in his pre-human existence? They'll say yes. Yeah, that's what we believe. Jehovah used his pre-human son to create the heavens and everything in it. So you believe that Jesus in his pre-human existence was there before the heavens were created? Yes. Where was he dwelling in? The only being that doesn't occupy space and place is Jehovah. He alone is spaceless and timeless and placeless. How can this creature called Michael be there before his dwelling place existed? Where was he dwelling in? You with me there? When I asked... A Jehovah Witness couple, couple whose husband was an elder. You know what he told me? You know what he told me? He told me, oh, that's a mystery we don't know. He sounded like a Trinitarian. That's a mystery we don't know. <laughs> but here's now the dilemma. The only choice you have, the only choice you have is, well, Jesus was existing in Jehovah. Jesus was existing in Jehovah. Bam. Wait. If Jesus was existing in Jehovah, that means he's part of Jehovah. There's nothing that's part of Jehovah that's created. There's nothing that's part of Jehovah that's created. So if Jesus existed in Jehovah as part of Jehovah, and there's nothing in Jehovah that's created, you just proved that Jesus is uncreated. Because he existed within and as part of Jehovah's being. Thank you. You catch it? You with me there? I'm not done yet. Hadouken. 
You understand? If Jesus was there before heavens and earth, and before heavens and earth, the only being that existed is Jehovah God. You didn't have time, space, or place. That didn't exist until Jehovah created time, space, and place. That means Jesus must have existed within as, and as a part of Jehovah's being. But there is nothing in Jehovah, nothing part of Jehovah that's created. So if Jesus existed in Jehovah as part of Jehovah's being, then he cannot be a creature. He's uncreated. Welcome to the wonderful world of the Trinity. Now let's go to Hebrews 1, 2 to 3. I'm going to unpack Hebrews 1 tonight, Lord willing. Michael means who is like God or he is like God. Yep, we have a lot more Darius. Hebrews 1, 2 to 3. Exactly, JP Christian. It is so easy to destroy and decimate these lies, these blasphemies, these perversion of the Bible, if you know the Bible and are walking in the Spirit. Let me repeat it again. It is so easy to destroy, decimate these lies, these blasphemies, these perversions of the Bible, if you know the Bible and are walking in the Spirit. Okay, now let's read Hebrews 1, 2 to 3. Okay, let's read. God hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. He has now spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So God the Father employed the agency of the Son to make the worlds. Well, now notice verse 3. Okay. Notice verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, the Son upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So notice two things. Jesus sustains, preserves all creation by his powerful word and is guiding all creation to its intended goal by his powerful word. And Jesus is the son that God used to create the ages and everything in it and everything in them. You catch that, right? Do you see what Hebrews 1, 2 to 3 says? Do you catch it? The son was appointed by God to create the worlds, the ages, and everything within them. And it's the Son who sustains all the ages by His powerful word. He's sustaining all creatures. He's sustaining the sun and the moon. He's sustaining the earth. He's sustaining the trees, the flowers, the insects. Everything is being sustained, kept alive, and being moved to accomplish God's intended goal for creation by the Son's powerful word. Is, you, you with me, right? Hebrews 1, 2 to 3. Okay, now let's read Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. Now, folks, cut back on the comments because you got to read this. Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. You got to read this because here you're going to see the Father praising the Son, Jesus, the Father praising the Son, Jesus, as the unchanging creator and sustainer of all creation. Guys, read it, please. No comments, because I want you to see this. But unto the Son, he saith, he means the Father. The Father says to the Son, your throne, O God, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. So now the Father is praising the Son, glorifying the Son, saying, Son, you are the God who reigns forever, right? Thou, son, hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, your God, meaning me, even thy God, me, hath anointed thee, you, with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Now watch what the Father says to the Son about the Son in verses 10 and 12. Guys, you got to read this. This has to blow you away if you are truly in love with the Trinity, and thou, Lord, this is the Father speaking. The Father continues to speak to the Son about the Son. Notice what the Father calls the Son. And you, Lord, in the beginning, has laid the foundation of the earth. What? God is saying to the Son, you are the Lord who at the beginning of Genesis laid the foundation of the earth. 
You are that Lord, son. Son, you're that Lord who did it. And the heavens are the work works of thine hands. Wait, wait, wait. God is saying to the son, son, you made the heavens by your hands, by your power. They shall perish, but thou remainest. You, my son, unlike creation, you remain. Creation is fading. It's decaying, but you remain. They shall all wax old as, as a garment. And as a vesture, you will fold them up. They shall be changed, but you are the same, and your years shall not fail. Did you catch it? Guys, did you catch what the father just said to the son about the son? Wait, did you did you understand what you just read? And by the way, it reads the same way in the Jehovah Witness Bible. Hebrews 1, 10 to 12 reads the same way in the Jehovah Witness Bible. The son is being addressed by his father. God the father glorifies the son, praises the son, magnifies the son, and says, you, my son, are the God who rules forever. And you, my son, are that Lord who at the beginning, in the beginning, Genesis 1, laid the foundation of the earth. You laid the foundation of the earth. And you, my son, created the heavens by your hands, meaning your power. You remain the same, unlike creation that's decaying and wearing out. You will roll them up because you sustain creation and your years never end. <whistles> You're telling me. God the Father Almighty just glorified, magnified, praised the Son for being the unchanging, unchangeable creator and sustainer of all creation of the heavens and the earth? That's what you just read? Okay, but now let's read Hebrews 1.10 one more time. Wait, wait, let's read Hebrews 1.10 one more time. Hebrews 1.10, one more time. And thou, Lord Jesus, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Now, here's where I'm confused. Andrew and everyone else, help me understand this. Since the Father just glorified and praised Jesus for, the, for being the one who created the heavens by his hands, if Jesus created all the heavens, that means he existed before the heavens came into being, right? If the father just said to the son, the heavens are the work of your hands. That means the son was there before the creation of the heavens. But wait, according to this heretic cult leader, Greg Stafford, and the Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus is the spirit creature, the archangel Michael. How can the archangel Michael exist before the heavens? And how can the archangel Michael be credited with creating the heavens by his own power. So my question is, where did the archangel Michael dwell in before the archangel Michael made the heavens? Where was he living in? Where was his dwelling place when a created spirit being has to have a place to dwell in? Zena, if he's existing in the bosom of the Father before the heavens, then that means Jesus is not part of creation, but he's a part of God, existing within God, inseparable from God. Therefore, he's uncreated and eternal. Zarina, how can Jesus be dwelling in heaven when you just read in Hebrews 1.10? I don't know if you guys are catching it. Hebrews 1.10 Jesus created the heavens by his hands. Let's read it one more time. Hebrews 1.10. And thou, Lord, this is the Father speaking to the Son. You are the Lord who laid the foundation of the earth at the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Exactly, Shirley. <laughs> yes, it does, Amy Lowe. You haven't read it. The Jehovah's Witness Bible says the same thing in Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. You want me to prove it? Here you go. Please, sister, there's no argument with me. It says it. Here you go if you don't believe me. I'm going to post it. Here is the link to their online Bible, their perversion of the Bible. Here's the link. You see why I'm going to go slow? 
and I'm going to be methodical, and I'm going to do multiple part series to decimate this blasphemy. There you go right there. Click on it. Now let me give you the exact reference, link to the exact reference. Hebrews 1. Let me give, it, give you the link. It reads the same way. Here you go. Don't believe me. Don't take my word for it. Let me give you the link. Here you go. Okay, watch here. Click on that link, and here's the verse. Here it is. Their perversion of the Bible. Andrew, everyone else, read. There you go. JW.org, you can find it. And at the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. <whistles> Reads the same way. And then 11 and 12, they will perish, but you will remain, right? They will wear out, and you will wrap them up just as a cloak, as a garment, and they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years will never come to an end. So who told you, Amy, it doesn't read the same way? Where'd you get that from? All right? Thank you, Protestants posting it. So you see the dilemma for heretics and cultists like Greg Stafford and Joe's Witnesses? How can Jesus be the Archangel Michael if the Archangel Michael is a creature when here the Father glorifies the Son and credits him with creating the heavens by his own power, which means Jesus in his pre human existence existed before the heavens, but if he's a spirit creature, he cannot exist without a place or space. He cannot exist without a place to exist in. So where was he dwelling in? Where did he exist? Can someone help me? If he's a spirit creature? The answer is he's no spirit creature. That's the answer. He's no spirit creature. That's the answer. Mesori and Rob Christian, instead of telling me what to do to share, why don't you just enjoy the session, focus on the session, right? And stop distracting me by, well, do what CP does and share the screen because now you're being a distraction. If it's bothering you, leave. It's not bothering anyone else. Right? Are you with me here? Is it clear? Sorry for the distraction. So do you see how you can decimate, obliterate this belief in a matter of minutes, even from their own Bible? Right? Even from their own Bible. Because they admit, they admit, Jehovah created the heavens through Jesus, which means that Jesus in his pre human existence was there before the heavens. But how can he be there before the heavens? If he's a spirit creature, because spirit creatures have to have a place to dwell in. Is this spirit creature somehow unique and special in that he had no place to dwell before his dwelling place was made? Well, how does that make sense? It doesn't make sense, which is why he cannot be a creature, but he is the uncreated creator and sustainer of the heavens and the earth. Did you guys get that point? Ah, oh, Sahih Christian. Ah. Oh. Okay, you got it now? I can now end the session, walk away, order me a sausage pizza, right? Diet Coke or Coke Zero and chill because this is the end of Joe's Witnesses and these heretics like Greg Stafford. It's over for them. But I'm going to further bury and decimate this blasphemy. Okay, are we ready? I don't know if you caught it. Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Did you know that the author of Hebrews, tradition says <clears throat> it was the Apostle Paul. Did you know? Okay, we got a blasphemous pig, son of Satan. Send this blasphemous pig, son of Satan dog, on his merry way for blasphemy. Did you know that Hebrews 1, 10 to 12 is a citation of Psalm 102, 25 to 27? Did you know that Hebrews 1, 10 to 12 
is a citation of Psalm 102, 25, 27. Let's look at Hebrews 1, 10 to 12 one more time. One more time. Let's look at it. <clears throat> Let's look at Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Let's read it. Medic for Christ. Andrew Martin is agreeing on the basis of Scripture. Okay, now let's read. Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. And thou, Lord, this is the Father speaking about the Son. Thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same. And thy ears shall not fail. Now notice what's happening here. The author of Hebrews, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, takes an Old Testament citation and ascribes it to Jesus Christ, but he takes it a step further. Not only is he quoting an Old Testament passage and applying it to Jesus, he actually has the Father applying it to Jesus. So you understand what's happening here? It's God the Father who's applying this particular Old Testament passage to his son. Let me get my charger. Hold on. Are you with me there? You understand what's happening here? Right? It's not simply the author of Hebrews quoting an Old Testament passage and applying it to the Son. The author of Hebrews is saying it's the Father, God Almighty himself, the Father, who is taking the words of this Old Testament text and applying it to the Son. Do you know why that's mind-boggling? Because when I show you the context of this Old Testament passage, the Father has taken David's praise of Jehovah. The Father has taken David's praise of Jehovah and applied it to the Son, thereby praising Jesus as Jehovah God, the one that David worshipped. Did you get it or no? Is it sinking in? Hold on. I don't think you're getting it, folks. Hold on. I don't think you, you understand my point. I don't think you're getting it. You understand what happened here? Okay, let's, let, me, let me explain this. Okay, watch here. Why, Margiana? Is Jesus Jehovah God, Margiana? Let me ask you a question because I'm going to answer it. Is Jesus Jehovah God? Why wouldn't you get it, guys? I'm confused. If you're a Trinitarian, if you're a Trinitarian, then you believe the Father is Jehovah, the Son is Jehovah, the Holy Spirit is Jehovah. So why would you ask me why? If Jesus is Jehovah, then it makes sense that the Father would glorify Jesus as Jehovah. I thought you guys are Trinitarians. Trinitarianism teaches there's one God, Jehovah Almighty, but that one God is three persons. The Father is Jehovah. Jesus the Son is Jehovah. The Holy Spirit is Jehovah. But they're not three gods, one God. But they're different persons that love one another. So why would it shock you that the Father would praise Jesus as Jehovah? And then Jesus would praise the Father as Jehovah. And that the Holy Spirit would be said to be Jehovah. Because all three persons are Jehovah God Almighty. Which is why we're Trinitarians. Hello. Hello, my friend. Hello. Why do you think the church adopted the doctrine of the Trinity? The Bible forced the church to adopt the doctrine of the Trinity. You want me there? Hello, my friend. Hello. Are you with me there? So, did you see in Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, the Father glorifies Jesus as the Lord who at the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, created the heavens by his own hands. They wear out, unlike Jesus, who remains the same because he's unchangeable and his years never end. You saw that part, right? Exactly, Darius Cole. Right? You saw that's what... The Father does in Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, correct? Now, let me show you what Old Testament passage the Father quoted in reference to the Son. Let's see. Okay, let's go to Psalm 102, verse 1. Here it goes. 
Now, tell me if this sounds familiar. Psalm 102, verse 1. And if you can, Protestant, put the superscription, the top part where it says a Psalm of David. Okay, notice here. Psalm 102, 1. A prayer of the afflicted when he's overwhelmed and pours out his complaint before Jehovah. Hear my prayer, O Jehovah, the Lord, let, and let my cry come unto thee. Now, Psalm 102, 12. Psalm 102, 12. Psalm 102, 12. But thou, O Lord, Jehovah, see, it's about Jehovah. You can't escape it. It's all about Jehovah. Shalt endure forever and thy remembrance unto all generations. Now, here is the grand slam. Here are the verses that Hebrews attributed to Jesus and had the Father attributing those words to Jesus. Here it goes, folks. Psalm 102, 25 to 27. Psalm 102, 25 to 27. Psalm 102, 25 to 27. Watch here. Hmm. Watch what's going to happen here before the rapture. Be -dee -doo, be -dee -doo. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth. Sound familiar? And the heavens are the work of thy hands. Sound familiar? They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. Boy, that sounds familiar. Now let's compare Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Hmm, where did I read that before? Hmm, Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Uh -oh. <whistles> Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Let's see. Hmm. I wonder where I read that before. Hmm. Watch here. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And then verse 12. Watch what happens here. Hmm. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy ear shall not fail. Wait, wait, wait. Psalm 102, I said it's, a, it's by David. Glorify Jehovah in these words. These words are ascribed to Jehovah. You, Jehovah, are unchangeable. You remain the same. And you laid the foundation of the earth. And you made the heavens. They wear out, but you remain the same. And Hebrews says, these words are attributed to the Son by the Father, so that God the Father praises the Son, glorifies the Son, in the words of the psalmist, Words that are spoken about Jehovah that can only be said about Jehovah because only Jehovah created the heavens and the earth. Only Jehovah created the heavens by his own hands, not the hands of someone else. Only Jehovah remains unchangeable, unlike creation that's changing and is mutable. And you're going to convince me that Jesus isn't Jehovah? Now, here's what's ironic. A heretic like Greg Stafford will take few verses where Michael is said to do something similar to Jesus, where Jesus does something similar to Michael and concludes, see, he must be Michael. But when you have a passage describing Jehovah, a passage that cannot be attributed to a creature because a creature did not make the heavens and the earth. A creature did not lay down the foundation of the earth. A creature did not make the heavens by his own hands. And a creature cannot be said to remain the same. When those words are applied to Jesus, he still refuses to accept that Jesus is Jehovah. But when there are some things that Michael does, similarly to Jesus, see, he must be Michael. But when the very things that only Jehovah does is attributed to Jesus, that's still not good enough to prove to him that he's God Almighty. Do you see the wicked inconsistency and hypocrisy with these sons and daughters of Satan? These blasphemous dogs and swine. Do you see why I get angry and I'm passionate? Right? Michael does something that's similar to Jesus. And this heretic son of Satan is going to conclude, see, he's Michael. But when the very things that only Jehovah can do is ascribed to Jesus and a quotation about Jehovah is attributed to Jesus, that still doesn't prove to him Jesus is God Almighty. 
You wicked son of Satan. No wonder the Lord is going to shame you and expose you by his servants. You with me there? Now, before I move on, everyone get the point? Okay. Do you understand what the point is? Since the Bible clearly teaches, and Joe's witnesses and these heretics, like Greg Stafford, believe Jehovah created the heavens through Jesus, which means Jesus was there before the heavens were made in his preeminent existence. Therefore, how can Jesus be a spirit creature when spirit creatures must have a place to dwell in and their dwelling place is heaven, but the Bible says Jesus created the heavens and everything in them. So then how can Jesus be the spirit creature called Michael? Do you understand the absurdity, the irrationality of this position? Have I established that point? Have I established that point? Is it clear how easy it is from the Bible to destroy and decimate this blasphemy? Okay. But then the bonus was this. The father himself took the words of the psalmist where the psalmist glorifies Jehovah as the unchanging creator and sustainer of the heavens and the earth, of all creation. And then the father attributed to the son, glorifying the son in the language of Psalm 102, thereby glorifying his son as Jehovah God Almighty. But it gets better for us and worse for them. Hebrews 1.3 Let's look at it one more time. Hebrews 1.3. I hope you guys are being blessed, blown away with how clear the Bible is that Jesus is God Almighty, one with the Father and the Spirit in essence, but distinct in person. Hebrews 1.3. Let's read this one more time. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding things by the word of his power. Who is sustaining creation? And how is he sustaining creation? According to Hebrews 1.3, who is sustaining all creation and how is he sustaining all creation? Hebrews 1.3, you just read it. Who is it? Who is the one sustaining all things and how? Not breath of his power. It's right there, Hebrews 1.3. Who? Jesus, okay. How? By the word of his power, meaning his powerful word. His word, which is powerful. So wait, you're telling me Hebrews is saying Jesus is sustaining all things by his powerful word? Is that what you just read? Okay, now here's a question. If Jesus is a creature, does that mean Jesus is sustaining himself? And secondly, if Jesus is a creature and he created everything in the heavens, does that mean Jesus created himself in heaven? You see how silly, irrational this teaching is? So according to these heretics, Jesus is sustaining himself and must have created himself in heaven because he created everything in heaven. You see how silly and irrational this teaching is? How demonic and blasphemous this teaching is? Right? But it gets better. Hebrews 1 3, he's sustaining all things by his powerful word, right? But now Hebrews 1 6. Hebrews 1 6. Good, Freddie Mills. Hebrews 1 6. Watch here. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, Let all the angels of God worship him. Now, everyone, I need your attention here. Andrew is listening, so I know he's, he's giving me his attention. Pay attention to what you just read. Hebrews just said, the Father created the worlds through the Son. The Son sustains all the worlds, all the ages, everything in them, by his powerful word. He's preserving them. 
And all of God's angels are commanded to worship him. Did you catch it? Hebrews 1, 6 says, God commands all the angels to worship his firstborn. So all the angels must worship Jesus, the firstborn of God, the one who has preeminence. Jesus is the one who sustains all things, meaning all the angels, by his powerful word. He's preserving them. And he is the one that God the Father used to create all the ages, right? Did you catch it? Christ is the agent that created all things, everything in heaven on earth, which is confirmed in Colossians 1.16. Christ is the one who's preserving all things, giving life to all things by his powerful word. And all the angels worship Christ, God's firstborn. Correct? Correct? That is Hebrews 1, right? You got it? What you just read in Hebrews 1? Verses 2 to 3. You see why I'm going slow and repeating myself? Because I want it to sink in by the grace of God's spirit. Wait, folks. Then Jesus has to be Jehovah. Because you remember Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6? Let's read it again. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6. Watch here. Yes, you can use Yahweh. You can use Jehovah. Watch here. Nehemiah 9, verse 6. Watch here. Yep, there's a lot more. I'm just, I'm not done with Hebrews 1. Thou, even thou art Jehovah, the Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heavens of heaven, heavens, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein. And you, thou preservest them, and the host of heaven worshipeth thee. Wait, I'm confused. And now my 9, 6 just stated, Jehovah is the one who made the heaven of heavens and all their hosts, the earth and everything in them. Jehovah is the one who's preserving them, sustaining them, and all the angelic hosts worship Jehovah. But Hebrews 1 tells me, the Father appointed the Son to make the worlds, the ages, and everything in them. It's the Son who's preserving all of them by his powerful word, and all the angels worship the sun. Perhaps this is, I don't know if this person is a Trinitarian or an Arian. But if it's an Arian, this is perhaps one of the stupidest questions anyone can ask me. The reason why his name is called Jesus is because that is his identity after he became a man. Jesus is the name given to him to show that this Jehovah became the flesh and blood human being called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So Zena and everyone else, did you see what Nehemiah said about Jehovah? Hebrew says about Jesus. Jehovah and Nehemiah preserves all things in heaven on earth. Hebrews 1 says Jesus preserves all things by his powerful word. Jehovah and Nehemiah is worshipped by all the hosts of heaven. Hebrews 1, 6 says all of the angelic hosts, all of God's angels worship Jesus. And you're still trying to convince me Jesus is not Jehovah. But uh, can I ask you another question? Did you see Hebrews 1.6? Here's another question. Okay, Hebrews 1.6. Here's another question. Did it say, let all the angels of God worship Jesus, the firstborn? Or did it say, let most of them, many of them, some of them. Hebrews 1, 6. Let's read it again. Does it say all of the angels without exception? Or does it say most of them, some of them, many of them? Let's look at Hebrews 1, 6 again. Let all the angels of God worship him. Okay, now I'm confused. If Michael is an angelic creature, then he too is one of the angels that has to worship the sun. All of the angels means all of them without exception. So if Jesus is the archangel Michael, is he worshiping himself? So Jesus is worshiping himself. Hmm, interesting, Jehovah Witness. All of the angels worship the sun. But the archangel Michael is an angel. So he's part of the all. He is one of those angels that must worship the sun. But if Jesus is the archangel Michael, then Jesus must be worshiping himself. I'm now ready to become a Jehovah Witness or a follower of this 
demonized cult leader Greg Stafford. Hmm. But folks, it gets even worse for them, but better for us. And I may end it with this and continue Hebrews 1 tomorrow because I got a lot of meat. Yeah, it's about an hour and a half, so I'm going to we'll end it. Yeah. Again, in the book of Hebrews, the author is citing specific Old Testament passages. So in Hebrews 1, 6, he's quoting a passage from the Old Testament. Now, there's a debate. There's a debate whether he's quoting the Greek version of Deuteronomy 32, 43, or the Greek version of Psalm 97, verse 7. There's a debate. Now, in the following article, let me get it for you, right? In the following article, I document from Greg Stafford's own words where Greg Stafford believes Hebrews 1.6 is quoting Deuteronomy 32.43, okay? Deuteronomy 32.43, let me get it for you. Let me. It's. I'm going to post the links to these articles and rebuttals in the description box after the live session is over. Okay, but let me get it for you because I want you to see this. We're going to have fun with these heretics decimating their blasphemy by the grace of the triune God who lives. Here it goes. Here is the link. I want you to save the link. And I'm going to show you what Stafford himself, this cult leader who started his own cult following, states about the citation in Hebrews 1.6. And then I'm going to quote it from my article. Because in, in your versions, with the exception of the English Standard Version and the New Revised Standard Version, your version of Deuteronomy 32.43, unless you're reading, follow with me, the English Standard Version or the New Revised Standard Version, all these other versions follow what's known as the Masoretic Text Type, and the Masoretic text type doesn't have this reading. This reading that I'm about to quote is found in the Dead Sea Scrolls and confirmed in the Greek version. Now, let me get you a link. Let me explain it again so I don't confuse you. Okay? I'm trying to be as simple as possible. Okay. Here's the link. Save this link. Deuteronomy 32.43 contains a variant reading. Are you with me here? Deuteronomy 32.43 contains a variant reading. This variant reading that you're about to read is found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Hebrew version of the Old Testament produced by what many believe to be the Essenes around 200, 200 years before the birth of Christ, which we discovered in 1947. And this reading is also confirmed in the Greek version of the Old Testament called the Septuagint. So the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Greek version have this particular reading not found in the later Hebrew copies of the Old Testament produced by the Mezarites. Everyone with me there? I want to make sure you're getting this so I'm not confusing you. There's a lot of information to cover. I'm trying to be as simple as possible. Are you guys getting it? If you're confused, let me know. The Dead Sea Scrolls, which contain the oldest copies of the books of the Old Testament, Produced around 200, 100 years before Christ. In their copy of Deuteronomy 32, 43, there is a reading not found in the later Hebrew copies produced by these Jewish scribes called the Mezarites. But this reading is found in the Greek version. Okay. Here you go. Now let me show you what I mean. I'm going to quote it. In fact, Protestant believer, can you quote the English Standard Version? English Standard Version? Or you can't do that. Let me know. Okay, he quoted it. Read here. Now you're quoting the Masoretic text tradition, right? Protestant believer? Okay. Let me explain to Asher again. Let me explain it one more time. Okay. The Dead Sea Scrolls and the Greek translation of the Old Testament, known as the Septuagint, contain a particular reading in Deuteronomy 32.43, that's not found in the later copies of the Old Testament produced by Jewish scribes after the time of Christ, known as the Mezarites. Are you with me there? Asher, are you getting and you understand what I'm saying? He'll post Deuteronomy 32 43 from the King James Version so you can see what I'm talking about. Post it again. Watch here. 
I'm going to take my time with this because I want you to be educated. Like I said, I don't want to entertain you, nor do I, do I want to bore you, but I do want to educate you to know your Bible, the depth of the Bible, the beauty of the Bible, the majesty of the Bible, because it is the voice of the triune God. Okay, now this is the King James Version. King James Version is based for the most part on what's known as the Masoretic text type. Those copies of the Hebrew Bible that was produced by Jewish scribes after the time of Christ. Don't confuse everyone, Protestant. Don't put both passages together. You're going to confuse us. Post the King James one more time. Don't post it yet because you're going to lose them. Let's go with the King James. No, I'm not talking about the Deuteronical, uh, Deuterocanonical books. Deuteronomy is not Deuterocanonical. Deuteronomy is Moses. Okay. Now read the King James Version. Guys, read with me. King James Version. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he'll avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. That's the King James Version based on the Masoretic textual tradition. Now, let's look at the English Standard Version, which follows the Masoretic textual tradition, but also includes the readings of the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, notice the English Standard Version. Protestant, go ahead, brother. Rejoice with him, O heavens. Bow down to him, all gods. Bam. Did you see that reading? Bow down to him, all gods. Did you see that reading? That reading is not found in your King James. Bow down to him, all gods. For he avenges the blood of his children and takes vengeance on his adversaries. He repays those who hate him and cleanses his people's land. Did you catch it? Post ESV one more time. Did you see that reading that wasn't found in the King James? What reading? Bow down to him, all gods. Yep, the angels, Arena. The angels. All of this information is in my article. Save the link. Let's look at it again. Rejoice with him, O heavens. Bow down to him, all gods. That line is not in the King James. Let me know if you're getting the point. You understand? There is a reading found in the English Standard Version, New Revised Standard Version, that's found in the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Greek Version, but not found in the King James. Did you get it or no? What line, what reading was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls confirmed by the Greek version, not found in the King James? Well, post it one more time. Let's look at it again. Z and everyone else, are you following me or am I confusing you? And I'll repeat it tomorrow, God willing. What line is found in the Dead Sea Scrolls confirmed in the Greek, the Greek version that's not found in the later Hebrew manuscripts? Let's post ESV one more time. Here it is. Rejoice with him, O heavens. Bow down to him, all gods. That line is not in the King James Version. Bow down to him, all gods. I'm going to repeat it again. Bow down to him, all gods. Now let's look at the King James Version. Let's look at the King James Version. Yeah, please like and subscribe. Let's look at the King James Version. David Wood is a heretic. He needs to be condemned and exposed. Here's the King James Version. Notice what's missing. Rejoice, O you nations, with his people, for he'll avenge the blood of his servants. Notice the line, bow down to him, all, all you gods. Not there, right? It's not there, correct? What about the Greek version? The Greek translation of Deuteronomy 32. Does it contain this extra line? Now, this is all in my article. Let me show you it does. Here you go. Here's the Greek version. Here you go, folks. Here you go. Rejoice, ye heavens with him. Let all the angels of God worship him. Bam. Did you catch it? Bow down to him, all you gods, was understood to be a reference to angels worshiping God. 
Here you go. Rejoice, ye heavens, with him. Let all the angels of God worship him. Let all the angels of God worship him. Let me repeat it again. Let all the angels of God worship him. Did you catch it? Are you catching it? So the Greek version is backed up and confirmed by the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls contain the oldest copy of Deuteronomy, written around 200, 200 years before the birth of Christ. So the Dead Sea Scrolls version of Deuteronomy 32, 43 has a line saying, bow down to him, all you gods. And the Greek version has that same line, but interpreted. The Greek version understood the gods to be angels. So it rendered it in Greek as, let all the angels of God worship him. So you have the Greek and the Dead Sea Scrolls agreeing with each other that this line was there in the Hebrew copies that they had access to, which they recopied or translated. Is that clear? Did you get it? Does everyone understand my point? Now you understand that when you're teaching the Bible at times... You have to go in depth, slowly, methodically, because you got to lay a lot of groundwork so that you understand the historical cultural background of these passages as well as the variant readings, right? So before I move on to my next point, if you didn't get it, let me know. I'm here to help you by the grace of God's Spirit. So you understood that the oldest Hebrew copy of Deuteronomy 32:43 has a reading where it says, bow down to him, all you gods. And the Greek version translated a copy of the Hebrew that read the same way. Because in the Greek version, you have that line that says, let all the angels of God worship him. Right? Yeah, in that place, you could say that, Zarina. Now, what's the point? Many scholars, many scholars believe. Now, Zena, if you go off topic on me, you're going to lose the point. This is why I'm afraid to get into these issues because notice, why are they different? Why are they called gods? I can then drop the point of the subject that Jesus is not Michael and address this or ignore these problems for now and focus at the issue at hand. Do you want me to now go into a side issue, a rabbit trail? Why are they called gods? Or do you want me to focus on how this proves that Jesus can't be the Archangel Michael? You see? This is why I get scared bringing up these issues, because your mind wanders. And now you lose the focus of the topic, which means you won't be able to understand the topic and use it. No, you can't. You can't ban Zena. Zena's Chaldean. She's dangerous. Use it to refute the heretics. Can we not worry about this for now? And focus on the issue at hand. How does this passage prove that Jesus is not the created spirit creature called the Archangel Michael? Okay. What's the point in bringing this up? Here's the point. Many scholars believe that Hebrews 1.6 is quoting Deuteronomy 32.43. Let's look at the Greek version and Hebrews 1.6 one more time. Here's the Greek version, Deuteronomy 32, 43. Rejoice, ye heavens, with him, and let all the angels of God worship him. Now let's look at Hebrews 1, 6. Yep, Jesus Christ is Lord, you're getting it. Hebrews 1, 6, let's look at it. Let's look at it because I'm almost done. And again, when he bringeth in the firstborn into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Now notice the Greek version of Deuteronomy 32, 43 again. Rejoice, ye heavens, with him, and let all the angels of God worship him. Do you see the connection here? Hebrews 1, 6 sounds identical to the Greek version of Deuteronomy 32, 43. Medic, you're getting it. Amen. Do you see it? So now, if someone asks you the question, where is Hebrews 1, 6 getting this quotation from 
What Old Testament passage is Hebrews 1, 6 quoting? Well, most likely he's quoting the Greek version of Deuteronomy 32, 43, right? Here goes the Greek version of Deuteronomy 32, 43. Let all the angels of God worship him. Are you guys making the connection? Are you making the connection? Now, ironically, Greg Stafford agrees. Greg Stafford agrees. This heretic, Greg Stafford, here, notice what he says. He agrees. See also Hebrews 1.6 for the LXX. LXX means the Greek version of Deuteronomy 32.43, which uses angels for gods. Bam! Greg Stafford, this heretic, agrees. Hebrews 1.6 is quoting Deuteronomy 32.43 in the Greek version. LXX is the Roman numeral symbol for the Greek version. You know why that's amazing? You guys know why that's amazing? He just buried himself. He refuted himself. And he destroyed his own cult beliefs. There it goes. That's the link. You know why? Folks, do you know why? He just admitted. Let it sink in. He just admitted. Hebrews 1.6 is quoting the Greek version of Deuteronomy 32, 43, where in the Greek version it says, let all the angels of God worship him. Do you know why he just decimated himself, buried himself, exposed himself for being a heretic and an agent of Satan? Do you know why? Can anyone tell me? Why? Because in Deuteronomy 32, 43, I'm almost done, Black Swarm. God bless you. There, the angels are being commanded to worship Jehovah God Almighty. In Deuteronomy 32, 43, the angels are being commanded to worship Jehovah, the God of Israel. Wow. Wow. Let that sink in. Deuteronomy 32, 43, the angels are commanded to worship Jehovah. Hebrews 1, 6, that command to all the angels to worship Jehovah is now applied to the Son, where all the angels are commanded to give the Son the very worship given to Jehovah. I did. We're an independent Baptist church. I quoted my article. It's a command to the angels to worship Jehovah. Jesus Christ is Lord. Why would the MEV contain that reading in Deuteronomy 32, 43? Huh? When MEV is based on the later copies of the Hebrew Old Testament produced by the Mesorites, copies produced after the time of Christ. Why would you expect to find it in MAV? I just said this reading found in the Dead Sea Scrolls in the Greek version appears in the English Standard Version and the New Revised Standard Version, but not in all the English translations. You there, though? Okay, do you understand what we just discovered? We just discovered that Hebrews 1.6 is a citation from the Old Testament where angels are commanded to worship Jehovah God Almighty. And Hebrews 1.6 applies that command to Jesus so that, that now that all the angels are being commanded to worship the Son, but in the Old Testament, they're commanded to worship Jehovah. How could the author of Hebrews take a passage where all the angels are commanded to worship Jehovah and apply to the Son if the Son is not Jehovah. And then the same author took Psalm 102, 25 to 27, a psalm where Jehovah is said to be the unchanging creator of the heavens and the earth, and he applied that to the Father, glorifying the Son as that Jehovah, God Almighty, 
who created all things and remains the same. How could he do that if Jesus is in Jehovah God Almighty, the eternal Son of the Father? Lord willing, I'll have more in part two because my time is up. Right? This guy, the word independent Baptist church, needs to be sent on his merry way. Block this idiot die for being a nuisance, an agent of Satan, because he thinks that if they quote a particular version, then all of it must be inspired. Bye-bye. Time is up. Lord Jesus willing, I'll do part two tomorrow. You guys with me? So far, I gave you a lot of meat to decimate these heretics and their blasphemy, proving beyond any reasonable doubt Jesus is Jehovah, God Almighty, distinct from the Father and the Spirit, yet one with them in essence, who became flesh for our redemption. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Jesus is Jehovah to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, we love you. Part two tomorrow, Lord willing, pray for me and my daughters. Pray for the support. Pray for the ministry. Pray for their protection. And pray God saves me from my trial in these 60 days for his glory. Christ is risen. He's alive. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, we love you. See you tomorrow around 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Take care.